Hey guys, welcome back again to Ken Tamplin Vocal Academy, where the proof is in the singing. I'm continuing my Dimashathon, and uh, I just love this guy. I mean, you know, it's hard not to like him, right? Yeah, this guy's handsome, uh, his voice is incredible, you could tell his humble, sweet, uh, stage persona, he's not, it doesn't seem like all egoed out and full of himself and he delivers every time, like guys like never disappoints, right? So uh, anyway, I chose, um, and I hope this is the correct way to say this, but a sorrowful person's help, uh, at least that's what the translator says when you grab this off the internet, you translate it. Uh, and I know the song, this is one of the most beautiful pieces that he does, so I love this, I, I, I'm prepared to do this. I haven't actually heard this version of this one, so um, if I have, maybe I did a vocal reaction to something a, a while back. But um, if you guys wouldn't mind, please like and subscribe to my channel. That'd be really cool. Uh, I have a singing course, and the course is called How to Sing Better Than Anyone Else. If you're interested in singing, you could find it right here at Ken templinvocalacademy.com and I have a free singing form where we talk about all these different vocal styles and techniques and how to get in all these different places. So if you wanna just go kick the tires a little bit, go into the forum, see if it's right for you. Um, it's it's pretty awesome. So 20,000 people, over 20,000 people in the, in the forums right now. So anyway, with that said, um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna dive right in now. I love this piece because it's such a beautiful piece. I think it's French, if I'm not mistaken. And, um, and uh, let's just dive right in. We'll talk about it as we go. Here we go. Okay, now let me let me let me go through a couple things real quick. First of all, the way he he's so sensitive on this, and yes, it is a French piece, obviously. Um, I want to back up even farther than that for a second. I've seen some comments from some people that are really lame and they say, yeah, when he sings in English, you can't hardly tell what he says and some other things like that. You know, here the guy's singing in multiple languages. He sings in his home language. I've heard, I think he sings in some Mandarin stuff. He's singing in French, he sings in English. How many languages do you speak and sing and sing this well in? So let's just kind of start there in his defense. Um, the second thing is, is that in the last video, I talked about a lot of people accusing him of being a castrati. Now, if you don't know what that is, go look it up. You know, way back in the day uh, in, in Bel Canto and early classical music or throughout classical music, um, they would take the younger boys and they would you know, say you don't need that anymore uh, because they want they didn't want their hormones to change so that the boys could sound like sopranos and so that their voices never change. So they're, I've heard people kind of accuse him of that because he has such a high range. And that's just hogwash, guys, because if you listen even right now, well, I'm gonna back this up a second. When, in, in the days of the castrati, when that would happen, it's kind of like being a eunuch, okay? Um, it would inhibit the hormones of the growth of the length of the vocal folds. <laughs> the focal folds, I said. And, um, funny pun intended. But, um, so that they would stay shorter, like a woman's length of their vocal folds, and never grow, so they could maintain these real high registers, like the Vienna Boys Choir, and you know, the Mormon Tabernacle Choir, and all these different high range, you know, young young boys singing. Um, so, but they they never maturated, so the chords never grew and got big uh, to have a lower resonant sound. Well, this this would be physically impossible, and proves my point of a lot of other people. I've gotten these silly. I don't want to say arguments, but let's say discussions where everyone says he's a high tenor. And I said, he's not a high tenor. I thought that early on until I, or I got a chance to listen to a lot of his stuff. He's kind of a high baritone like me that can sing way up in there. And the contraltos, we've talked about what a contralto is. It doesn't just mean with alto. It means you can sing in his range and the alto range or alto and soprano. Okay, so it's kind of a better way of saying it. it's your alto and soprano. So you've got kind of two voices going on where the alto can go all and dip all the way down into the lower tenor range. But, but listen to this. He actually reaches down into the high baritone range right here. And 
Right? Now, I'm not saying a tenor can't go down that low, but a tenor won't have the same resonance and the same roundness and girth to his voice down that low. So I suspect he is a high berry just like me, not even a tenor. Why is this important? Are you ready? Are you really ready? I'm gonna ask one more time. Are you really ready from what I'm about to say? This is crazy. For a long time, I've been trying to convince people that say, well, I'm a baritone and I can't get past, you know, this note. So baritones, high baritones, we've talked about this. Their highest note in, in bel canto in the German vocal fox system is, hey, that note. And on a good day, hey, that would be the highest note that they would sing in, including myself. And what I have been telling you guys, and that's put an F or an E4, or an F sharp four, okay? Now, I wanted to point that out because people have said, oh, Ken, you're just born with a naturally high voice, you're naturally high gifted voice, blah, blah, blah. Hogwash. I had to earn every single one of those notes. And I suspect, I don't know this for certain, but I suspect that he did too. Is that crazy? Think about, think about what I just said, think about, First of all, the whole bel canto community is gonna to totally flip out from me saying this, and all my bel canto friends for all these years are gonna say, Ken, you know, what are you trying to do here? You're gonna destroy people's voices by telling them that. Nope, the proof is in the singing. I'm gonna back this up one more time, and I'm gonna show you that his tonal qualities of his lower register are more consistent with a high baritone being able to reach down with that kind of low residence and girth and roundness to his voice and that he was able to take that register of a person that's only supposed to sing that low and is able to have stretched his voice into the stratosphere and back. What does that mean for you? It means there's no excuse. I'm not saying you're gonna become Dimash, I'm not saying you're gonna become Ken Tamplin, and all that depends on your starting point, how long you're willing to work at it, correct vocal information like what I have in my singing course, but the point is, is that if he sings this low with this kind of resonance in his lower register, there's no way he could have done it without his chords being longer to be able to get that. This is just science, folks. His chords being longer. And if that's true, then the notes you hear him doing that may give him all this range, he earned every single one of those notes with exactly what I teach in my singing course on how to stretch chest, how to get mixed voice, how to go through the passaggio, how to hand it off to head voice, and back and strengthen the full spectrum of the voice to pull off what he does. Let's listen to it one more time. And I wanna hammer this home to all you guys out there that think people are just naturally gifted. Yes, there are those people, and they have shorter vocal folds. They can't get down into this register. I know I'm harping, I know I'm you know, being redundant right now, I'm not trying to babble, but I want you guys to get this through your thick skull that this brother is probably a high berry and he's able to get this kind of resonance down way low. Check it out. There's the tenor voice. Beautiful round vowels. We talked on the last video. We talked about the fifth element. There was the you know the drunken concubine meets the fifth element. We had a, a previous video on this one. Um, he's using a coloratura technique, which is a soprano technique. Um, and what that is is if you listen to some good coloraturas, if you don't know what that means, I I strongly recommend you listen to like Maria Callas or some of the really great coloraturas that are opera coloraturas. And you go, oh no, Ken, you're just gonna sentence me to go watch some opera. Yes. Actually, I am. If you want to understand this and you want to understand how he gets to where he is, um, this is a technique where you use what we called inner valic scales. And in the last session, we went <laughs> right. 
right? And I did the scale for you, I broke it down so you could do it on your own. But it's these kinds of scales we practice, not just for the notes of the scale, there is that, and there is that for good pitch and intonation in the scale, but how you get the good pitch and intonation in the scale is how the vowel is shaped in the throat, okay? Very, very important. I cover all of this in my singing course. Now, I'm not seeing a lot of other vocal coaches out there showing you guys this stuff, so this is some pretty advanced stuff because Dimash is really advanced, okay? So as we're going through this, um, I want you to listen closely to the shaping of the vowels in the way he sings it like a coloratura soprano. So type in YouTube coloratura soprano and listen to the speed that they do these intervallic scales with and also listen to the vowel shifting in the throat and the way they shift the vowels at the different registrations. Because each registration, I know this is advanced, but each registration, depending on your voice type, has a different color of the vowel. Now watch. I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Here we go. Watch. Now, now, yes, it's true what the words are gonna dictate the vowels, but let's do this by, I'm gonna only give you two vowels as an example. If you're singing an ah vowel up that high and you wanna go from this range and higher and, and toggle between it, it's So ah, ooh, ah, ooh, ah. Okay, so if the word is o oh or ah or a derivation or a derivative of an ah vowel up that high with his vocal registration, his voice type, then that's how you wanna shape the vowel at those exact notes in his voice, voice uh, vocal registration. So do it with me. Now you're gonna notice something. If you were just to stay on the ava, it's harder to drag that much muscle mass up to pharyngeally spread or to, to have the mouth spread and to have that vowel be so top heavy, so weighted, so much weight at the top that you can't sustain it. So what we do is we have a vowel modification and we close the vowel down. Okay, right? Now, he happens to be on an A-E sound, so he's actually singing the word A. Right? So he, you want to go A, E, A, E, A. Now why is this? Okay, let's start back on the A vowel and then I'll explain the A, E. On A, A is big. This is how your throat looks. This is how your throat looks on drugs. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. You'd have to do that commercial back from the uh, 80s. But anyway, <laughs> back to the A. So here's the A vowel. Now as we go, that's how your throat looks. Okay, so as he closed the vowel, we're actually protecting our voice, our vocal folds, and we're not dragging all that weight up, maintaining the beauty of the vowel. You don't even know that he's doing it. You can't tell that there's a vowel shift or a vowel modification, but it's covering the sound or darkening and protecting that sound so it closes it down for safety and for the ability to get up in the head for easier access to your range, okay? now. Let's talk about the A-E. This is also true for A-E. So if I'm singing the word A of sorts, just like he was, it's A-E-A-E-A. -E -E -A. Why? Because here's A, how your throat looks like A. Right, A-E-A-E-A, -E -A -E -A, up top. Now, again, I cover all of this in my singing course. At different registrations or at different note values of your voice, these will change and be different. And you have to do these intervallic scales or a, a myriad of different scales in order to be able to have these, this muscle memory build naturally in the throat. So you're saying, oh my gosh, Ken, you mean on those notes I'm supposed to memorize all this stuff for just those notes to be able to sing like this? Well, the answer is yes, but in a different kind of way. When you do these scales correctly and you understand what your voice type is and as your voice grows, these will change also because you'll be able to shift these later in your range to get more range, okay? Now, I know that sounds crazy and if you don't understand, that's okay. Go into my singing forums, get my course, I cover all of this. But 
what we do is we actually build muscle memory in the throat to where you don't have to think about it. So as you're doing these scales and I show you exactly how to do them, it builds the muscle memory. You don't have to think about it and sit there and go, oh, let's see, on an A4 to a, a B4, this is where I make that vowel shift. No, it happens naturally in the throat by training these scales, in this case, in like a coloratura format in order to be able to get to these places smoothly with perfect intonation, not sounding shrill up top because you're still chiaro oscuro, which means warmth with brightness in the center. So you, you have the clarity of the brightness in the, in the sound of the vowel. You don't sound like you're singing with cotton in your throat or gagging on your vowel. You have the brightness in the center with the warmth around it, okay? A lot of information and we're gonna cover a lot more as we're going through Dimash because this brother is singing with a lot of information, okay? I'm just breaking it down and giving you a vocal analysis and, and licks and tricks and uh, secrets to, to the, the singing technique. Oh. He's gone, right? He's covered the sound in a, in, a, in a kind of a cross between the way a tenor would do it, but he's up so high, what is that? Let's grab this again. He's at an F sharp five, he's really high. So he's kind of covering, he's covering it like a, a, like a, a tenor would cover it, but he's singing in the soprano range. So he's kind of like, <laughs> you know, what, what planet is this guy from? He's actually doing it in the soprano range and singing it like an alto contralto, borderline soprano all at the same time. That's one of the things that makes this guy so cool is he resides in so many different vocal fox. It's mind blowing, right? So I'm sure the guy has just lived and breathed his voice because he can almost do no wrong when it comes to the bel canto stuff. Now, let me, let me point something out about it. Now, in that case, he didn't cover the sound, and, and the previous line that he sang before it was much more on the pop side. And I've, I've talked about this in the very first Dimash video, so I don't wanna belabor it and cover this too much. If you don't know, go back to the very first one in this series that I'm doing here on this Dimashathon. Um, but anyway, um, is he's actually contemporizing a bel canto sound exactly like I, how I do. That's why I'm so surprised with this guy. I'm like, how did this guy get this information? I had to study through, through some of the world's greatest vocal coaches and take a piece of this and a piece of that and a piece of this and put it all together to figure this stuff out. And this guy, I'm, I sing, I, I like more of a rock approach to things. So I belt more and I like distortion and stuff and he doesn't really do much of that at all. But um, at least that I know of, if I'm wrong, correct me, put that um, in also in the uh, comment section. But let's go back to this again and I wanna show you how he contemporized the sound. One minute he's covering it like a soprano or a contralto alto soprano and the next minute he's singing in a very contemporized sound. So let's let's go back and check this out. That's more tenor. Now he's bringing it in the face. He's brightening up the sound, giving us a lot of mask. He gets real big in it. And then he brightens up the sound like an 80s metal guy, right? But he goes in and then he contemporizes that sound rather than go, he could have done that like a soprano, like he did the rest of it, but he chose to shift gears and step into a contemporary sound. Again, this brother is going back and forth with a lot of different techniques, a lot of different styles. You probably had no idea what was under the hood and behind the curtain of all the stuff that's going on and the way he's approaching this stuff. And I, that's why I wanted to break this stuff down, take some time, do this together, show you how to do it. Um, so you, if you ever wanna try to do this on your own, you can, you can start to play with this stuff and check it out. Oh, I need to, I need to. 
<laughs> See, proof of the berry. Ada, ada, ada. Even tenors don't get that sound. There's low tenors that can, and maybe he is a low tenor, but this is more, and I've heard him do even lower stuff than this with more, more roundness and girth and resonance in the lower register, which then leads me to believe, back to the same thing again, I think he's a high berry. I don't know if he'd come out and say that, but I'm telling you, man, from the sound I'm hearing from a lot of the different frequencies he's singing in. Beautiful. Such passion and emotion, man, it's cool. There's his tenor voice. of the soprano range and just screaming way up there going from tenor from baritone to you know again doing playing singing these color turn notes perfect intonation pitch perfect color going in and out of contemporary sounds to old classical sounds and and and, and everything in between so yeah man the guy's from another planet just smash he's smashing it once again out a mix into a full resonant chest sound and back that's also really hard to do too anyway guys if you like what you heard uh, please like and subscribe and check out my next video